And today I'm going to be talking about coastal management along the Pacific Coast Highway, also known as PCH, and addressing erosion impacts on local communities and ecosystems. So a little bit of an introduction to the erosion on PCH. Um, the Pacific Coast Highway is a critical transportation route that locals in Malibu use every day, and it is also an iconic coastal landmark that people come and visit when they are traveling to Los Angeles. It's located along an unstable coastline, which makes it highly susceptible to erosion. Some key drivers of erosion on PCH include the atmospheric rivers, which are intense storms that cause flooding, um, landslides, and erosion, wildfires, which are very prevalent in California and cause burn vegetation, which intensifies land instability, and then geological instability in general, the natural characteristics of the region heighten vulnerability. Some coastal erosion events and responses that have happened recently include um, in March of 2024, the Carmel to Big Sur event was an atmospheric river led to a highway collapse along the scenic Big Sur coastline, um, which isolated communities and Highway 1 suffered significant damage from landslides and erosion. In response to this, emergency road repairs began, including clearing debris and restoring eroded sections, Long-term restoration plans include reinforcing roadbeds and monitoring unstable cliffs to prevent future disruptions to the area. In February of 2024, the Ventura County event was severe storms from atmospheric rivers, which brought heavy rainfall and high winds, causing widespread erosion. Coastal areas saw landslides and road washouts, while neighborhoods were impacted by flooding. In January of 2023, the Point Doom event in Malibu was there were heavy rainfalls in early 2023 associated with atmospheric river storms, which caused significant bluff erosions in coastal areas, and this threatened homes and roads in Malibu. Cliffs experienced extensive erosion, resulting in unstable overhangs and cracks near the residential structures. Mm -hmm. In response to this, authorities implemented temporary road closures and began planning for cliff stabilization. Uh, they used measures like rock netting and soil reinforcement to prevent further landslides. The rains also highlighted the vulnerability of PCH and nearby properties to intense weather events. In November of 2022, in the south of Malibu Creek State Park, there was an event that intense king tides combined with heavy rainfalls caused significant coastal erosion in the area south of Malibu Creek Park. This natural process was excavated by sea level rise, leading to undermining of the roads and infrastructure. In response to this, um, rock revetments were installed as temporary protective measures. However, these structures continue to contribute to long-term beach erosion. Additionally, temporary road closures were implemented to ensure the safety and allow for further repairs. In February 2017, in Big Sur, there was a massive landslide at Mud Creek, which buried about a quarter mile of Highway 1 under 5 million cubic yards of rock and debris. This event followed heavy rainfall that destabilized the slope and caused a landfall. In response to this, there was a reconstruction project which spanned multiple years and cost approximately $54 million and involved rebuilding the highway and <clears throat> incorporating protective measures like drainage systems. In 2015 to 2016, near the ocean-facing slope of Malibu, there were storms that led to significant landslide as well. Um, this highlighted the vulnerability of the area's geology. And in response to this, Caltrans initiated a long-term restoration project to stabilize the slope and restore transportation access. So all of these events have impacted local communities in various ways. Um, there have been many disruptions, including frequent road closures. There's been over 55 road closures of the PCH in history, which disrupts the commutes of locals. Um, it affects tourism and local economies because if people aren't coming to PCH, they aren't making money. There have been safety concerns, crumbling slopes and light poles threaten public safety. Um, it's difficult to drive on a road where there are landslides and your car and you are in danger, especially because you're driving on a cliff of the ocean. And then economic loss. Tourism is a huge source of income and um, PCH is a big touristy area. So if it is dangerous, people aren't going to go there and the area is not going to make money. There are also various impacts on ecosystems surrounding PCH. 
Erosion destroys coastal habitats, which displaces wildlife that are native to that area and um, live along PCH. There is also water quality issues. The sediments from landslides pollute coastal waters, impacting marine life. So when there's landslides, um, which causes the ground to um, fall into the water system, this basically pollutes marine life, but also impacts local communities because they use water sources there as well. And then climate feedback intensifies as climate change through rising sea levels and more severe weather events. Some coastal man management strategies that we can implement to help this are emergency repairs, stabilization with K-rails and slope reinforcement, and regular inspection after storms are immediately immediate responses that we can take to help manage this. And there are also long-term solutions, replanting vegetation, which would help stabilize the soil and reduce landslides. It would just make the soil more stable altogether. And then slope restoration projects would help prevent erosion and sinkholes and proactive monitoring, identifying the high-risk zones and targeting intervention there, um, just basically prioritizing and, and spending money in the places that need it most. In conclusion, um, some of the key takeaways to this were that erosion along PCH impacts infrastructure, communities, and ecosystems. Effective coastal management requires both short-term and long-term uh, long strategies. Um, it's important to have a balance. Of course, long-term stability is the goal, but in times of emergency, we need to implement quick and efficient short-term repairs. And call to action, it is important to advocate for increased funding for coastal resilience. Um, so many people live along the coast, and so we really need to prioritize getting funding um, to help uh, manage this coastal erosion that's happening very quickly and impacting so many different aspects of life. Um, we need to encourage communities to get involved in restoration efforts because more advocacy leads to more change and supporting climate adaptation measures to reduce future risk.